Hey, this is Dan from userspice.com and I wanted to introduce you to userspice 4.4 with a new dashboard and widgets and all that kind of fun stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download it. Uh, you can get it at userspice.com right from the home page. Then we're going to copy it to a folder after we extract it. So I'm going to copy those files. And then what we're going to do is we're going to browse to the folder that we copied it to or that we copied it to from the browser. So there we go. And it gives you some things to check for recommending that you have PHP 7.1 or above all that kind of stuff. So we're going to hit continue. Now it's a good idea to make a database first. So go to your web host and make a database. Um, and so, but user spice has the ability where if you, have permission to do it from your database user, then you actually don't need to create the database in advance. So I'm gonna show you that just cause I think it's kinda of cool. So we're gonna go ahead and pick a time zone. Uh, let's say we're in Mexico City, I love Mexico. So we're gonna go there. And my username is root, I don't have a password. And we're gonna say, let's make a, a uh, database called video. And so I'm gonna try this and it's gonna give me an error. And it's gonna say basically that I have the right credentials but I don't have a database. So I'm gonna tell it, create the database. So I do that, it's successful, and finalize, clean everything up. It's gonna do one final database update to make sure you have the absolute up-to-date database. And then, voila, so we're here at the dashboard. Now, if you have to log in, your username is admin and your password is password. I uh, highly recommend you change that. Anyway, so let me give you a quick tour. You can see how many users you have, how many pages you have, your different permission levels. Here, uh, some graphs on logins, some graphs on your different permissions and stuff. Uh, these are actually widgets, so you can modify these and make as many more as you want. Uh, we'll have a place to download more of them on User Spice. Uh, some basic information about your system. If you ever have to edit your PHP.ini, this is the file you want to edit. All that kind of stuff is right here for you. How to get support, uh, some information about your users, some security logs. In fact, that log just came up saying that we ran this. Uh, ran this log so anyway uh what we're going to do we're going to look at the settings and we're not going to go through every setting but you can sit here and check it out and just see that there's different settings to take your sign your site offline and put it in maintenance mode uh, there's just all kinds of different things that you can do you can do two-factor authentication all the the stuff that would be a pain in the butt to code on your own you can do right here uh, registration settings, there are some things you can decide how long Vericodes last, like when you want people to verify their email, do you want to auto assign usernames, do you want to allow people to change their usernames, all that kind of stuff. Uh, social logins, Google and Facebook with some documentation up here. Uh, the email settings so that if you want to require people to verify their email, this will send them a verification notice and other kinds of notifications. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at the tools. And there's, we're gonna go through these kind of quickly, but there's a really cool backup tool in here that allows you to do anything from backup your entire project to uh, just the database or any of these other options in here. You can also combine this with the cron jobs and you can automate this process of backing up your website. Uh, we have a cool form builder. It's not everything I want it to be, but it's, it's coming along. So uh, you could come in here and say, all right, we're gonna create a new form called demo and uh, the first thing it's done is it's automatically created something in the database and created the first column of the database, which is an ID. And so we don't have to worry about ID. Let's just say that we wanted to do something like, uh, well, first name. So we'll make a new column called first name. And the, uh, let's just say if we wanted to um, give that form a label, we might say, tell me your first name, like just really long. Uh, and then what we could do is we could say, we could have a shorter one if we were displaying this information of a table, it would just say first name. Uh, whether it's required, we'll make it required. You can add some classes and other HTML down here. You can change the order. Uh, it automatically bumps them up by 10 to give you some room to change the order if you decide to reorder them later. And you create the field. And you'll see what happens is it automatically created a form and shows you a little preview down here and all that kind of stuff. You can come in here and edit this field down here. So it's pretty sweet. It's, uh, there's some documentation on userspice.com on how to drop those forms in there, how to do basic processing where it would just insert into the database, how to do advanced processing, all that kind of stuff. So it's there for you. Um, 
anyway, there's a thing for IPs. You can choose to blacklist or whitelist IP addresses so they can or can't visit your site. Um, you can come in here and um, you can message your users and all that kind of stuff. There's a couple of test messages in here. Same thing with notifications. Notification system is off by default, but you can basically program notifications in that'll pop up for your users. Uh, that's pretty much just a free form system to use however you want. There are some security logs. This will tell you when somebody tries to visit a page that they don't have access to. You can kind of get an idea if someone is, uh, is trying to hack around your site. Um, sessions, there's a whole session management thing where you can log people out. That's not enabled by default, but you do have the option of doing it. System logs, uh, let us see things like, for instance, that th that last update that we deployed after um, installing the system, that that was deployed, who did it, when they did it, all that kind of stuff. Uh, one of the coolest things about 4.4 is the template system. And so we have this idea of basically the way you should picture it is sort of like WordPress. Your back end, uh, which is this whole dashboard thing, is completely separate from the front end. And we're doing that to allow you to have uh, whatever kind of template you want. You can use Bootstrap 3, you can use Bootstrap 4, you can use no Bootstrap. You can basically do whatever you want on the front end to make the site look and act like the way that you want to do it. You can use Node.js, you can use whatever you want. It doesn't really matter from our perspective, but um, these templates give you an easy tool to manage your themes on the front end. So if I come back to the tools and the templates, I can come in here and pick like one of the more aggressive ones like Superhero, and then when I go to the front page, my entire view has changed to this orange and blue color scheme. Uh, now let's say that you want to make your own and you want to kind of diverge from what we're doing. I can come in here to user C and templates and I can just copy this and let's see here, we'll tear a copy of that. And then let's just call this new one Epic. Um, so we're going to give it the name Epic. And now you would be able to come in here and edit your bootstrap, your, your JavaScript, all that kind of stuff. You can edit your footers, your headers, how all the navigation works can all be edited custom in there and you know we're never going to mess with your template. And so when you come back to user spice and you reload the template manager, oops, wrong page, go to tools and templates, just by copying that one, this new epic theme is in here and you could change this as however you want. Uh, anyway, so the next thing is navigation. This isn't my favorite thing. I think we can do better and we're going to work on doing better. But there are two types of navigation which can actually be set here. Uh, we have, where is it? Database driven navigation, which is on by default, or file driven. So you can either put your navigation, your, um, your menus and stuff like that, you can either put all of that in the database or if it's just easier for you, you can just code it. You can make whatever kind of menu you want. Um, if you have database navigation, then it's right here. And you can add things and decide, uh, you know, who has permission to visit their accounts and you know, who sees what. I guess not necessarily permissions, but does it come up in the menu and all that. Um, we'll jump down here to permission levels because I'll make a few real quick. So by default, you have user permissions, which is what somebody needs to log in and log out and all that kind of stuff. And then you can make as many as you want. You can say manager. Um, so I'll create one called uh, manager. I'll create one called family, whatever. You can create as many permission levels as you want. If you click on these, you can decide uh, what pages are managed by those permission levels. In other words, uh, I'll show you on the page thing, but you can decide, can somebody with the family permission visit this page or not? Uh, you can also come in here to the users and there's nobody in there, but I could say I could add the user, uh, user, let's see here, user. Yep, I can add the user user to this permission level and now they have this permission level. So you'll see if I come over here to users and I click on them, they have the permission levels of user and family. And so um, you don't want to think about these as a hierarchy other than admin. Admin is pretty much the highest but the other ones it's more you can be part of as many group as you want as many groups as you want and you can uh, use them to allow people to be able to visit or not visit pages at will uh, so anyway there's things you can do in the user manager thing you can come in here and change their password you can um, add permissions to them i'm going to show you one other kind of cool feature so i can come in here to myself and go to this miscellaneous setting and say is allowed to cloak 
And so when I do this, let's say that one of my users is having a problem. I have this all the time. A user's having a problem. I can't see the site the way they see it. I only see it as an admin. So what I can do is now that I'm allowed to cloak, I can go back to my users and I can go to this miscellaneous thing and say cloak into this user. So what's going to happen is, as far as user spice is concerned, I am this user. So I click on this and now I'm cloaked and I'm seeing this as them. So I'm at their user page, their profile, all that kind of stuff. Um, and if I edit it, I would be editing this as them, not as myself. And then when I go back to their account page, I can uncloak and I am me again. So pretty sweet. Anyway, so that's just the basics. Uh, I do want to show you a little bit about plugins. We'll be able to download those off userspice.com. But we've created this idea of plugins. Uh, there's nothing in by default, but you can download them. And let's see, if I go in here to user C and plugins, I'm going to grab one uh, from another install that I have. Let me see here. So I'm going to pick one. Let's say sysinfo. So let's say I want to know some more information about my server. Maybe I'm having problems. It's running slow. And so I want to see what in the world my server is doing. So all I did was download this plugin and unzip it. Nothing fancy. And then I come back to the plugin manager. And when I refresh it, I kind of get two tables up here. I get the system info uh, where I can see all the uh, information about the plugin. Like in other words, if it doesn't work on Windows, I might need to do this. Um, but I can come over here and I can install it. And then I can activate it. And once I launch it, it'll take a second to launch the first time because it's learning everything it needs to learn about my system. Uh, but in just a moment, it's gonna give me all the information. It's gonna give me how many processors I have, uh, you know, different information about my devices, how many users are on there, uh, what my hard drive status is like, what my network adapters are like. All of this kind of stuff is available. And see, your hosting provider may not give you this detail, but this thing will do its best to query the server and give you that information. So let's just do one more, uh, just for the heck of it. So let's go in here to the file manager again. And let's say you're from Europe and you have to deal with all that GDPR stuff and right to be forgotten. There's a GDPR plugin. So you can come in here and I can go to the browser and I can go to the plugin manager and now I have this GDPR plugin. So I click it and I install it and I enable it and I can click it. And now um, what happens is I can make all these different messages for my system. In other words, like, you know, your cookie policies, details about the basic uh, right to be forgotten, all that kind of stuff. Whether or not you want to allow the user to delete their own account, all that kind of stuff can be handled by this plugin. And the cool thing is every time the version changes, it will create a new version of your privacy policy and stuff and allow you to always say, to know which versions of that your users accepted. And so if you update your policy and you want, then they will have to, uh, to re-acknowledge the new policy. So anyway, uh, just little things to make your life easier. That's the point of user spice. Uh, I also wanna point out that if you need any help, you can come here to uh, the documentation. We have live Discord 24 seven, where you can download or even, you don't even have to download the app, but on Discord, you can chat with the developers, you can chat with me. Uh, you can also go to the forums at userspice.com. If you see a bug and there may be a bug, then you can fill out a bug report uh, on the bug tracker and we will do our best to get it fixed. If you know the solution, we'd love for you to submit it. Anyway, thanks so much for checking out User Spice and I hope you enjoy it.